Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Flexi webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today. Our presenter is Aaron Clapp, our application specialist at SAI. He knows everything there is to know about Flexi, and today he'll be showing us a new feature in Flexi 21 that lets you add custom ink channels. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have either about this feature or any other Flexi topic, so feel free to put those questions in the chat and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always, so if you want to review anything Aaron discusses or share it with someone else, we'll be sending you the link this afternoon, so look out for that. And with that, we're ready to get started, so I'll turn it over to Aaron. All right, sounds good. So um, in this, uh, this week, we're gonna be talking about um, uh, these custom ink sets. Um, these custom ink sets uh, you might have been familiar with in the if you've used or maybe heard about the die sub version of Flexi. Uh, now those features are now coming to Flexi uh, as a whole. And so uh, what we want to do is kind of walk through what that looks like, how to create some new custom ink sets and, and things like that. Uh, so you kind of have an idea of what, what you want to do inside the software. It all starts in the production manager. And uh, the main purpose or the main reason why you do this or uh, changing ink sets or want to set up a custom ink set is if you have a printer where you've replaced certain colors or certain inks um, with, a, with a different type. So perhaps you have a different workflow or, uh, that you're, or certain products that you're printing or, or things like that that would necessitate maybe removing certain inks from your printer and then replacing them with others. So for example, um, maybe if your machine prints like a uh, uh, light cyan, light magenta, maybe you want to replace that with you know a spot yellow and a spot orange or something like that uh, or you know whatever that might be. So that's kind of the idea here is we're replacing an existing color, with a with a different color and obviously that has its kind of benefits and and disadvantages uh, and it's not something you you do quickly but it's something that you know you're going to be changing workflows and that's why you'd want to do something like this um so the first thing you want to do is we would go into the production manager and go to the default job properties of a printer in this particular case i have a muto set up and this is a uh a printer that supports multiple uh, color setups. So if I go to my color correction or my color management tab uh, and I click on my color mode, you'll see here that I have all kinds of different options. Uh, there are all kinds of different printers that this supports. Uh, so if you have uh, something like this, um, you, can, you can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to light cyan, light magenta, white, white, and then we'll kind of play around with some of those options here. So what I want to do to start with is I want to go ahead and select the color mode that I want to edit. So the default one that you're going to be using. So let's just use this as an example. We're using CMYK, light cyan, light magenta, and then two channels of white. So you want to go ahead and select that. So that's going to be your default one that you're going to be working off of. And then you're going to hit this little custom button over here. We'll go ahead and click that. This is going to pull up the data for your current uh, reference color mode. And you can kind of see that here. You can actually change the color mode up here if you want to uh, as well. Uh, I go ahead and select it down there just so that when I pull this up, it's already selected for me. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our new color mode. Um, so why don't we go ahead and, and set that up? So I'm gonna go ahead and use my base CMY. Okay, now this is just a label. This is not necessarily intended to be perfect. So however you wanna label this is kind of up to you. Um, it's not going to ruin everything if you spell it all out or, or, or whatever. I'm gonna use the abbreviations here just cause that kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna keep with my light cyan and my light magenta, but then I'm gonna change my two white ones to something else. So let's do, let's see here, what would be a good uh, option for this here? Let's try, 
FY, which is fluo yellow, and let's do light black, so LK. And we will place that in there. And again, we don't need to name it variable dot or anything like that. We can just say new color mode. It doesn't matter really what we put in here. So now we've got our custom colors here. And we've got our order. So this is going to be important to know what the order of the, um, the options are. Um, and actually, in this particular color mode, we have double white, but it's not giving us the two spots for white. So let's just do, we'll just do one at a time. Let's just do the light black for now. We'll do that. Since it's only giving us one um, spot here. Or we could uh, replace the light magenta with something else. But we'll just, we'll just go with this for now. So we're going to put in a light black. So... We've got our order, so you got to make sure and click through the, the different options in terms of what you want it to do. Uh, so, you know, we got to make sure and match this up with the printer. So that's going to be really important. So make sure that from the manufacturer, you know which color is which order and which number they're in, because uh, that'll be important so you don't flip colors around. Once you've got them in the correct order, which by, the, by default, it usually goes in a kind of semi-numerical order. Um, it's just if you have a more than a seven color machine, so if you have like, you know, eight or 10 or however many colors you have, you want to just make sure that you know where each color goes so that it doesn't get mixed up, especially if you're replacing a bunch of colors. Um, then here, this is just a visual representation of the color or what you want it to show up as in terms of in the menus and different things like that. So uh, down here in my color mode, we're going to do light black. So I'm going to put in light black here. Now, when we're doing a light color, you'll notice that all of them have the word light. So light cyan has that, that light in front of it. We'll need to put that in there if we're doing any kind of light color so that when we go into the color correct or when we go into create a profile, it recognizes this as a light color versus a primary color. So if this wasn't necessarily a light color and this was just like an orange or the fluo yellow or some other color, right? Some other pink or, or photo black or whatever it was, maybe it's just a spot color. Uh, we would uh, go ahead and leave the light out. But if it's a light color, like a light cyan or light magenta, we want to make sure and put light in there so that the software recognizes it when it goes to the color profile. And we'll see that here in a minute. Uh, we'll want to make sure that that's available. So you'll notice that now, again, the, the color name doesn't matter too much except for the, the instances where you're using the light colors. So uh, you can name these whatever you want um, as long as uh, – these down here represent your colors. But uh, personally, I would keep them to the specific names of what they are so you don't get confused. So obviously cyan, magenta, we want to kind of keep these names in here just so that when we look at the profile or when things happen or when we, you know, we're, we're, we're modifying things that we make sure that we have these. So it makes it a lot easier to kind of understand and keep track of. So we'll keep these here. We'll put light black in. And then the last thing we'll look at here is the ink type. So obviously you have a process color, which is a four color process. So your typical colors like your cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, your CMYK colors. Uh, then you have a light color, which would be like the light cyan or the light magenta. So in this particular case here, we wouldn't choose process or any of the others. We would choose light. If you were going to do just like a spot color, like an orange or a purple or some other kind of custom ink, then we would go ahead and either set that as a process or set it as a spot. If it's a very specific color, you're probably going to set it as a spot. Um, then, of course, you can always set it to none if you're just not going to use that ink channel at all. So if you're just going to not use that channel, you can just put none. And that would be for if you are creating you know, for example, like the CMYK only, and you didn't want to use the light cyan, light magenta, you could blank out several of the options available for you. Or if you're not using white or, or whatever that might be. 
So you can choose the option for, for none. Uh, and then spot would be for that specific color. So for example, a white would be a spot color, or if you were doing metallic, that would be a spot color. Uh, and so kind of think of it in that way. Once we're done setting this up, we've go ahead and named it. I can go ahead and hit save. Do I want to confirm? I do. I want to confirm that. And now it says that it's been successfully created. So hit OK. It'll automatically add it to the bottom. And now I've got my new color mode. So CMYK, light cyan, light magenta, and light black. At this point, uh, we're ready to start printing with it, really. Um, but you're probably going to need to create a profile for it. So this is where you're going to want to go into the color profiler and check that out. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go into my second tab here or second bar here and click down to the color profiler. And if I click on create ICC profile, I can see that my new color mode is selected by default because I set it as my default option. If I hit next, I've got my standard CMYK ink limits, right? If I hit next, this is going to take us to the screen where our light inks are processed. So we've got our light cyan, our light magenta, and now we have our light black. And so we can edit our light black just like we would our uh, CMYK colors uh, or, or sorry, our light cyan, light magenta colors in terms of our transition from light cyan to regular cyan. Let's go ahead and close this and let's go back. Yeah, we want to continue. Let's just try another one here. So we'll go to default job properties just so that we can kind of see some different things that might be happening here. Let's go in here and let's go and edit. Here's a here's a here's a one that we could edit. Let's go to the CMYK red, green, blue. So this would be uh, Pantone spot colors. So you can see that um, we can choose our colors here. Uh, and it looks like these have been set to black, which is kind of weird. But you could what you can do is you can just easily come in here uh, and change these to different colors just so that they're visible. And why don't we change one of these to a process color. So let's just call this, um, let's call this regular red, and then we'll do CMYK RGB, except for this, we're gonna call this one uh, modified. All right, and we're gonna set the red to process just because we wanna see what that does, and we'll leave the other ones at spot. We'll hit save. Confirm. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one, make it my default. And then we're going to come into our color profiler here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got my modified one there. I hit next. And here's, here's the kind of the unique thing here is now we can choose our ink limits. So now the red and the RGB or the RGB colors are all three here, and we can kind of see and we can edit the ink limits on those. Now, typically with spot colors, you um, you can, whether you want to do those at 100% or if you want to edit those, you can. If you want to include these colors inside of this uh, ink limit verification test, all you have to do is click them on, and then the next time you print your ink limit test, it will print this same chart in red, green, and blue. So you can kind of do that. Now, if you don't particularly want to and you just want to uh, just do it for process colors, that's fine. Uh, you can always just leave these unchecked and it'll just remove them from the, the ink limit test. Uh, that will depend on a lot of, uh, you may not want to, uh, you may not want to do a percentage of that color, especially when it's a spot color. So that might be the reason why you don't necessarily uh, change the ink limits on those because you just want it to print at 100% so that you get the correct spot color or whatever color it is that you're printing. In this case, it's an RGB color. So you would 
you want to print the full color. You don't want to print half of it or anything like that. You want to print the full color to get that specific color on your print. So uh, as you process this, this will just be at 100% by default when it goes through and you create the, pr the profile. So now you can see where uh, we, we can create these new custom color sets and you can do all kinds of options. So basically any kind of color uh, that you can purchase for your machine and edit this, this is gonna be the easiest way to come in here. You can now customize this as much as you want. These will all show up in terms of uh, your, your color profiler and things like that. The only thing you're limited to is if your machine is a CMYK machine only, then you know you would be replacing your CMYK. Or if, you're, if you have the light cyan, light magenta, then you can replace those and you can kind of do some different things like that. Um, so the only thing you're limited by really is how many ink sets your machine can print at, at the same time. But this is a really good way to say, get yourself into an area where perhaps you need to print very specific colors and you're gonna be doing this a lot. Uh, you could convert your machine over to this new color uh, and then you know carry out that custom workflow or something like that. So it's a really great way to kind of customize your machine and do something that you haven't been able to do in the past. Uh, and, and of course, the Flexi software makes it really easy to go in there and edit those. Uh, it makes it super simple. Uh, just a few seconds of clicking and just setting those up, and then you're you're set to go. You've got a new custom ink set for your machine. So that uh, concludes the presentation. Do we have any questions on uh, on on this or about anything Flexi in general? It could just it doesn't have to be this, but it could be. Uh, something that you might have questions about overall. Thanks, Aaron. Um, I have a question from Francis. Which printer configuration can do fluorescent yellow, fluorescent magenta color? They have a, they listed one here. I don't know if there's an, an easy answer for you. Let's see here. So, um, you know, I, I believe, I believe the fluorescent yellow and fluorescent magenta would just be something that you could replace. Uh, I would imagine it's very similar to like white and metallic and things like that. I would imagine that you could just print them. Um, I add them into your printer. This will kind of be device dependent. Um, and so uh, obviously, for example, um, uh, if we add a printer like a MUTO 1624, we're kind of limited as to what we can do. Uh, let's see here, because we're looking at some of this. So even a 1624X, for example, uh, won't give us all the different types of of ink set. We're just more limited in terms of what we can do, uh, in terms of setting it, setting it up. But, uh, you know, I would check with the machine manufacturer first. That's probably going to be the first step is seeing, um, you know, what the printer is capable of and kind of finding that out. So for example, this printer here is a four color printer only. And so you really can't go more than that. So you would be having to remove one of your main colors, you know, to, to do this. But, um, you know, there's a lot of other printers, like there's some uh, HP printers, I know Canon printers, that they have all kinds of crazy colors, like they've got orange, blue, purple, they've got all kinds of crazy, they've got like three different kinds of black, like light black, dark black, regular black, and they have photo black. So those kinds of machines, they have lots of different inks, uh, kind of for photographs and stuff like that. This, you know, this could be really interesting for that as well. Um, But yeah, you should be able to, I mean, as long as a printer can support it, the idea here really is you're just taking whatever whatever color combination you have and you're just replacing it. So it's essentially just giving the availability to put 
whatever custom ink you want in the machine. So if the machine can support it, then we can support it basically here uh, just by adding it in. Um, and again, you know, we, we support a lot of other printers like these Canons that have, you know, multiple different color modes. So it's not a matter of necessarily, I think, of the color type. It's whether the machine will support it. And if it does support that ink, then, then great. Yeah, we can add it in. If you're looking for a specific, uh, uh, whether your machine supports it, uh, you know, different things, I would probably check with the manufacturer. And then one of the things too I would check is typically your, your color mode here will, will be dictated by, you know, how many slots your machine has available. So for example, like in the 1624 example, this machine can only print CMYK. It, you know, it doesn't have extra options for the light cyan, light magenta. Those are in other printers. So yes, you could replace one of your main colors with another, you know, but since you only have four color slots, you know, you're looking at, you know, options, you know, having to do something there. But uh, Hopefully that hopefully that answers the question. Francis, you had also asked, do you provide color profile services? Um, I don't know if you want to clarify on that. You can create a custom ICC profile within Flexi. Um, you can. Um, you're right. We can create custom uh, profiles, but we don't actually offer any services uh, from our end. Um, you know what a good a good place to to take a look at that or or to to or to find information is either your local resupplier or um, or perhaps a local dealer of your machine might have and I've had I've, I've heard of this quite a bit of uh, they actually have equipment that you can rent for the day or uh, if uh, for example here in our local area. If you go to Reese, uh, Reese Supply here in Salt Lake, uh, they will they actually have somebody that can that can do a profile and they'll come out and do a profile for a fee or something like that. So or they'll they'll rent it to you. I, I'm not exactly sure, but I do know that they've uh, they've come out and done profiles before. So, you know, depending on where you're at and what your local area is, I would just check with your local your your big ro local resellers and just see if they've got the equipment they can rent or borrow or or if they have somebody that might be able to come out and assist you with, with making a profile. Bill has a question here. How the rip, um, might be a typo here. Red is E process color and this color should replace 100% Y and 100% M. That's where you're going to, so once you set up your ink sets, this is where you can map a specific color to a specific ink. So, you know, in this particular case, I use, I just changed one of the RGB colors to a process just so that we could see it show up in the, in the profile there. But, you know, what you would do is you'd go into your color mapping and you would set uh, a color map and I don't have a file up here at the moment, but, um, you can do this in production manager and you can also do this in flexi in the design side in rip and print. You can actually go in and you can set a specific color to print as this. So for example, if I'm, if I have a file that has um, white, I would specifically need to go into flexi and say, Hey, this spot color in my file needs to print white. Or if you have a specific file that has that red in it, you would say this red needs to be, you know, this specific coordinate. You know, if I say if that red is 100% yellow, 100% magenta, then that specific set of CMYK combination would print out with this ink. And so that's where the color mapping com becomes involved. So what you do is you'd set that up in your default. So any time that you ever use that particular red, which you know, I would probably save it in my color bar in Flexi, uh, and then whatever time I use it, 
the printer automatically knows what to do with it. So that's where your custom color mapping comes in uh, for, for different colors and things like that. So you can come in and edit those, those color maps uh, inside of the default job properties right in here. And then you can turn, you can, obviously you can turn it on or off, but typically it's by default it's on because we have, uh, our software actually has all of the Pantone colors mapped to a specific default value or an industry standard value according to Pantone. So um, typically this is, that's why this is always turned on, but you can always come in here and add a new variable in here. You can tell it what it is you know, and things like that. And then you update that color and you're, you're good to go. Other questions for Aaron today. Just a little bit longer here. Okay. I think that's it. Thanks Aaron for answering those questions. And thank you all for joining us for this flexi webinar. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter so you won't miss any webinar announcements. Our next Flexi webinar will be about a really cool new feature in Flexi 21, variable data printing. That'll be on October 5th, and we hope to see you there. Thank you again for attending. We hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.